underrated and underlooked his entire career, Florida international big man Osasu Osagai had one of the best defensive seasons in all of college basketball this year, leading the NCAA with a mark of 3.7 blocks per game and a 13.8 block percentage. Osagai was a force to be reckoned with, protecting the rim for the Panthers all year long. Four years ago, Osagai was a walk-on at FIU. Now, he's just wrapped up a year where he took home Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year honors and is an NBA draft hopeful. Welcome into the first YouTube edition of the Prospect Podcast. I'm Ethan Piotta, breaking down the top NBA draft prospects across the globe. And two days ago, I had the chance to sit down with Osasu Usagai and talk to him about his journey to this stage as a player and as a person, how he thinks his game translates to the NBA, and what getting drafted would mean to him. So once again, joining us today is 2019-2020 Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year and NBA Draft Prospect, Osasu Osaigai of Florida International University. Appreciate you joining me today, Osasu. How's it going? Everything's going good. It's my pleasure. So, you know, before we even get into talking basketball, I've become familiar with your amazing journey to where you are now over this last week or so. So kind of, you know, just talk about how does one go from being a walk-on his freshman year at FIU to arguably one of the better defensive and overall big guys in the entire country um, by his senior year? You know, um, I started off as a walk-on, obviously, as my freshman, as a freshman under a previous coach, uh, Coach Anthony Evans. And, um, you know, I learned a lot through the other big men that were starting over me. And, you know, I built up like, like pretty much like a fire inside of me that just made me want to, you know, work hard and get better. And it's like a day-by-day -day thing, you know, approaching each and every day as like an opportunity to get better. So even from my freshman year, I can remember days where I didn't get in the game. I just, you know, I'll do my own workout after practice and stuff like that. And it's just taking each day um, as an opportunity to get better. And then, you know, luckily I got the opportunity to get a scholarship going into my junior year under Coach Ballard. Yeah, what was that like? I kind of read about that experience for you uh, when, you know, Coach Ballard came in and offered you that scholarship. I believe it was after practice one day, right? Yeah. yeah um, uh, what was, was that experience like? No, it was, it was something crazy, you know. Um, I didn't see, like, a lot of, uh, like, different reaction videos and, like, how they go about that type of stuff on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. Right. But I never imagined that, that would be the same situation. You know, I had came into his office probably, like, a week prior, and I wasn't, like, too confident. I wasn't too sure, like, where his head was at or anything like that. Um, and then I think I want to say after practice, you know, he was giving his little speech that he does to end wrap up practice. And then he just said something about uh, he wanted to thank somebody who's been, you know, hard working and stuff like that. And he just, you know, told me the good news. And it was just crazy. And I cried later. <laughs> in a strange time right now, how have you kind of like found ways to stay in basketball shape and, and stay ready for the next step of your journey? Because I know a lot's like not available in terms of just like you know, normal gyms that you might go to or whatever. So, like, yeah. I, I kind of just explain, like, what you're doing right now. Yeah, I mean, it's hard right now, but I think I'm kind of looking at it as, like, more opportunity, more time to pretty much get better so that when things do come back, I will be ready because I think once things come back, everything will move real quick. And um, I've just been going to um, – so luckily I have access to this one gym, so I've been getting uh, work on the court there. And then I have access to another weight room about three times a week that I've been going to. I've been just like lifting, running as much as I can, doing a lot of lower body stuff, just to stay active as best I can. Coinciding with that, talk a little bit about the virtual pre-draft process. Like basically, any, no, no one knows anything right now. So like, what's it been like for you so far? Uh, for me, it's fairly new, it's fresh. Um, you know, I just recently signed with an agent probably, I want to say no more than two weeks ago. So before that, you know, I was hearing different feedback about certain teams that might be potentially interested. Uh, and just like, you know, some people may know about me, some people may not know about me and how the process would go. Um, I just recently, like I said, just got signed with an agent at BDA. Um, and um, well, we haven't really gotten into We haven't been able to dive into that too much. We've just kind of been talking about, you know, how I'm going to work and, you know, staying healthy and just making sure I use the most out of this time right now. Um, because, you know, there's not really a timeline that they've given us for when workouts and all that stuff will take place. But um I've spoken, I've had one little interview over the phone just analyzing my game with um, somebody a while ago, but um, I haven't spoken directly to any teams at the moment. Got you. So kind of coinciding with that, you, you know, you mentioned we don't really know if there's a timeline or whatnot. So what do you think is the best way <laughs> right now that you can market yourself as a player on and off the court, you know, at this strange time that we're in? Um, I think virtually, you know, getting as many meetings and on the phone and, you know, and getting constant communication with as many people as possible, 
you know, putting out film, putting out videos, and just making sure, you know, I'm not, I'm not out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. You know, um, I think that's all we can do because, you know, health is uh, the pro like the main focus right now. I think all we can do is just put out as much material as we can and stay commu in constant communication. You as a person is one thing. Everyone knows you're a great person. I hope, you know, this video shows light on that. But, you know, as a basketball player, you did some things this year. So, you know, you had an extraordinary defensive and overall season this year. We already mentioned Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. You were also, you know, all Conference USA team this year for the first time in your career. Yeah. The shot blocking is obviously what stands out. 3.7 blocks per game, led the NCAA. Insane 13.8 block percentage, led the NCAA. Watching your film, though, you guys – at FIU, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys were on 100% switch everything on the perimeter defensive basis this year. Not so right. so what does that say about your defensive versatility? Because you were not getting blown by, uh, you know, by quicker guards on the perimeter whatsoever uh, mm -hmm. from the film I've watched. So what does that say about, you know, your ability to switch onto a guard and be able to stay in front of them? Because that, that's, you know, one of the best things that NBA teams are looking for right now. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think if people really like um, I don't know how many people you know I know FIU is not the biggest school but I think if people really look deeply and intently on FIU they'll see that offensively we run like a very often um, NBA type offense you know a lot of spread ball, uh, ball screens we run a lot of the same pistol action that the NBA teams run for our offense um, and defensively we switched to one through five I mean that's been our main focus since I came in as a junior I mean that's just how we play I think luckily I have that advantage over a lot of people being able to say like I'm already kind of used to that system and I've kind of had the opportunity to play against um, some good high quality guards and, you know, be forced to defend on um, a high ball screen action or stuff like that. And, you know, I think, I think it's a great advantage that if people really look deeply and they'll, they'll notice that we do that. Many sites have you listed at six, nine in height, yeah. uh, which is in terms, I mean, obviously you're a tall guy, but undersized for an NBA center. Yeah. Um, you know, extraordinarily enough. But, you know, in the current yeah. NBA, many teams are starting to play that kind of small ball with, you know, 6'9", 6'8", 6'10", centers. Mm -hmm. um, and valuing, you know, big guys like yourself that are a little bit undersized but can hold their own against positions one through five. So how do you, you know, how is that a testament to how your game fits into the current landscape of the NBA? Um, I think it's great. I think I'm capable of playing, uh, guarding the one through five and OEs. I kind of take it, like, Pride. It's a, it's a matter of pride for me when I have to, you know, guard a, a guard. Maybe when my point guard wants to switch back, I'm telling him, you know, get out the way. I want to guard him. You know, um, I think yeah. Um, I I am not the, I'm not the tallest person, but you know, I have, I have like a pretty long uh, wingspan, so I think that kind of helps compensate a little bit. Do you know what your wingspan is? I don't. I've had that question asked multiple times, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, kind of. You talk about you're not the tallest guy, but your wingspan's insane. So. Yeah. On the contrary, many of the top shot blockers in college basketball this year, beside yourself, uh, were seven footers or taller. And, yeah. you know, you're sitting there at six, nine. So how do you attribute, how do you attribute your shot blocking expertise? Like, is it to instinct, leaping ability, long wingspan? Because many six, nine guys aren't able to block, you know, 3.7, four blocks per game, uh, like yeah. you were able to this year. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not the bounciest dude, honestly. Um, I would probably put it as like a culmination of a little bit of everything mainly probably instincts and just like, you know, reading and just pretty much just timing. Like once I see somebody's about to shoot, you know, obviously I get it wrong a couple of times, but if I think somebody's about to shoot, I just, I just go for it. I'm kind of like baiting them into that shot. And I just, you know, I go based off my instincts. Right. So synergy is kind of like a, a, what I go off in terms of statistics or one of the biggest things I go off. It has you ranked 96th percentile of all players defensively. Uh, but moving into your offense, you know, this same site also has you ranked 98th percentile out of every single college basketball player offensively. What does that say about your, you know, your two-way ability? Because that's another big thing in the current NBA is, is guys that can play both sides of the floor, hold their own both sides of the floor. What does that say about, you know, your two-way ability as a player? Um, I think it just shows, like, um, the room for growth. You know, I didn't come into the season expecting to average the numbers I did, but um, I know my strengths and, you know, I know my weaknesses that I still have to work on. But um, I just think that um, it, ju it just shows that um, given the right, you know, system and right good and good quality players around me that I can be very efficient offensively as well. Absolutely. So talking about your offense a little bit more, you guys, you know, you ran a lot of pick and roll at FIU. Kind of you talked about that NBA style offense and whatnot. Uh, you were successful as a pick and roll man. You were able to kind of do your own thing out of the post and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but every year, you know, your free throw percentage – Although you didn't take many your first two years, it rose by about 5%. Mm -hmm. 
It went mm-hmm. from 50 to 55 to 60 to 65. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this year, you know, you also attempted nine threes after basically, after basically taking none your first three years at FIU. So what does that say about your continuous development as a shooter? Is that something that you're trying to put into your game? Um, and, you know, how, how does developing your shot take yeah, your game think, to the next level? I think um, for the last couple of weeks, you know, that's something that's been an area of emphasis. I've been working on my shot, my form, and um, just making sure I have the right mechanics for when I'm shooting. You know, um, in terms of, um, I think you said my free throw percentage is rising. I think it just shows that, you know, I put a lot more dedication and time into it, my free throws, like over the last couple of years. And I just think that there's a lot of room for improvement there. And in terms of how it could open up my game potentially, um, I think it's just another weapon. Uh, you know, it's kind of one of one of those things where you pick your poison. You know, now I'm able to, you know, finish in the paint or I can stretch the floor. And it's just more spacing, more options for a team that I would potentially play for. What is, um, you know, what are the main parts of your game? We mentioned the shooting. Um, what are the main parts of the game that you're looking to improve upon heading into higher levels next year? Uh, specifically, I'm trying to improve my ball handling. Um, apart from my shooting, I'm trying to improve my physicality and just like overall athleticism, just because, like you said, I'm undersized. Um, and just being able to, um, you know, have that physicality to back it up, especially when you're playing against bigger, older, stronger guys. And it's like a very physical league. I just want to, you know, make sure my body's ready for that. One thing that you would say differentiates yourself from others on and or off the court as a prospect, as a player, as a person? Um, On the court, I would just say maybe like my drive to win, you know. Like, I don't know. um, I'm one of those guys, you know, if it's one possession game and you pick offense or defense, I'm picking defense nine times out of ten. And I believe I'm going to get that stop. So I guess it's just my will and drive to win and kind of whatever is necessary attitude. I think that's something that is very, um, you know, it's felt or nearly tangible on the court. And then off the court, I mean, I'm just somebody who's like eager to learn. And, you know, I'm, I'm relatively new to this game. And I just want to soak up as much information, watch as much film and just kind of make up for lost time. So you mentioned that you're kind of new to basketball in general, like, you started playing when you were 14, was it? You were playing soccer before basketball? I was playing – I started basketball when I was about 15, about 15. Yeah, I started okay. playing soccer for years before that. What led, to, what led to soccer over basketball for you? Was it just like a, a growth uh, spurt thing? Yeah, I kind of just hit a growth spurt. My dad, he started kind of forcing me to play basketball. And then I just eventually kind of grew a love for it. What would it mean for you to get drafted into the NBA? Uh, not even get drafted, but just play at a higher level in the NBA. What would that mean for you as a, as a person and as a player? Um, honestly, it'll just be, you know, it's just a testament to like hard work and perseverance and just like a never give up, no, like never die attitude. And, you know, it was just, it'll just be kind of, it'll probably be one of the most emotional moments of my life uh, just to be able to say all that hard work and commitment and the sacrifices that I've made paid off. So that'd be, that'd be a great feeling, honestly. Absolutely. Well, certainly getting yourself on the radar here. Again, Osasu, thank you for joining the Prospect Podcast. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, sharing your game, sharing your experiences and whatnot. Um, Hope to see your name getting called whenever the draft does go on. Thank you so much.